All right, get ready to explore the world of lit RPG. Sounds exciting. We're going deep, beyond the surface, unearthing what makes this genre tick. Yeah. And trust me, this deep dive, it's packed with more debate than a rogue AI takeover. Wow. So we've got forum discussions, articles, all grappling with that big question. Okay. What exactly makes a book lit RPG? It's a good question. Get ready for some passionate opinions. Because the quest for a clear definition, well, it's yeah. sparking some truly epic arguments. I believe it. And that's what we're diving into today. It's like that old saying, right? Okay. Ask 10 lit RPG fans to define the genre, yeah. and you'll get 11 different answers. Huh. But what's fascinating to me is why this debate exists. Yeah, why? It's more than semantics. It's a community, I think, trying to grasp the essence of a genre that's evolving right before our eyes. That's true. Yeah. So. Let's cut through the confusion. Let's do it. What are we talking about with lit RPG? So lit RPG, it basically mashes up storytelling with the mechanics of role-playing games. Okay, I like it. Stat sheets, level up, skills, all that good stuff you find in your favorite RPG. Right. But woven into a novel. So instead of just like reading about a hero leveling up, right. you get the breakdown, the XP they earn, maybe even a peek at their updated character sheet. Exactly. And that Lit RPG Reads article we have actually does a great job breaking down these fundamentals. Oh, nice. Even traces the genre's origins back to early examples in Russian literature and Japanese light novels. Wow. So this fusion, yeah. it's not as new as some might think. But even with these seemingly clear elements, the debate rages on. It does. How gamey does a book need to be to be lit RPG? Right. It's one thing to agree on the ingredients, but the recipe, uh -huh. that's where things get interesting. Take author Matthew Siege, for example. Okay. He argues for a more inclusive definition. Okay. One that looks beyond literal game systems. Interesting. His Charon example from the forum yeah. really got me thinking. Yeah. Even though the movie predates lit RPG, right. it embodies the core idea yeah. of a world with game-like rules. It's true. Stepping into a digital arena where actions have consequences, yes. even if there's no literal stat sheet popping up. And that's what I find so interesting about Siege's perspective. Right. He even imagines a caveman RPG oh, wow. where the characters live in a world right. and survival depends on grog strength or fire starting. Ha. Huh. It challenges us to think beyond pixels and menus. That's a good point. And consider the underlying systems at play in any story. So is Tron lit RPG then? Were cavemen the original gamers? Who knows? It's enough to make your head spin. Right. But that's what's great about this deep dive. Yeah. We're not here to give easy answers. No. We're exploring the gray areas where definitions blur. I love this. And the genre's potential seems limitless. It's exactly. And that's what makes it so exciting. It really does. So lit RPG, it's not afraid to bend some rules. Definitely not. Even when it comes to defining itself, yeah, right? Yeah, it's true. But while Matthew Siege is like starting fires with his caveman stats, right? other lit RPG fans want a more you know, traditional approach. Totally. It's like that classic RPG party dynamic. Okay. You've got your flexible players, the explorers, right? Yeah. And then you've got the ones who need the dice rolls. Right. The meticulous character uh, builds oh, yeah. VR Ranger from the forum. They embody that hardcore mechanics love. Makes sense. Stat screens, damage notifications. Yeah. That feeling of a world with very clearly defined rules. And for a lot of readers, that's what makes lit RPG so addictive. Right? Absolutely. It's that human desire for order and control, especially when things feel uncertain. Totally. When a character levels up, defeats a monster, those numbers feel satisfying. Oh, yeah? It's like a dopamine drip for the gamer brain. That's true. You're not just reading about the journey. Yeah. You're experiencing it through this system that quantifies everything. Yeah, it's next level. But not everyone's after the same loot drops, are they? Exactly. And that's the beauty of the genre, right? Okay. Some readers, especially those coming from fantasy, yeah. they might find those explicit game mechanics disruptive. Oh, interesting. They want to connect with the characters. Sure. Get lost in the story, not a stat sheet. I could see that for sure. It's like that classic show don't tell, mm. but for mechanics. Right, right. Some readers want to infer the character's strength well, through yeah. their actions, not a line saying strength 18. That's a good point. And this desire for a subtle approach, it's not just lit RPG. Really? It's everywhere. Think about how film uses visuals, music to show emotion. 
Okay, yeah. Not just a character saying, I'm sad. It'd be weird. Right. In Lit RPG, this preference shows up in how mechanics are woven in. Ooh, give me an example. Take a magical duel, okay? Yeah. A mechanics-heavy Lit RPG, it might describe each spell's damage. Yeah, okay. But a story-focused one, it might focus on the visuals, the characters' reactions. So you're saying it's like the difference between like okay. watching a boxing match with all the stats on screen yes. versus... like. Feeling the emotion through the camera angle. That's it. It's not just about how much game there is. Right. It's how it's used. The emphasis on showing versus telling. So it's like choosing your character class. Huh? Exactly. Berserker with big numbers oh, or yeah. the rogue working behind the scenes, making you connect the dots. I like that. But things get really meta, like literally meta. Oh, yeah. When lit RPGs mess with that line between the game and reality, we've been talking about like how lit RPG mixes the real and the virtual. Right. What happens when the characters know they're in a game? Whoa, meta, right. It's like breaking the fourth wall, shattering the illusion. Exactly. And that adds a whole other level, you know? Makes you think about reality, choices. For sure. What does it even mean to be in a game world when you know it's a game? Right, right. Connor Caustic's Epic plays with this. Oh, yeah, Epic? That's a good one. Though, ironically, yeah. it wasn't considered gamey enough for a lit RPG promotion. Wait, seriously. A book about a game not gamey enough? Yeah. It's kind of funny. Right. But it shows how tricky this definition thing is. Totally. Lovely. So, Epic, it still dives into those meta questions, though. Oh, absolutely. Even without the stat sheets. It's got that awareness, the questioning of choice, which is like core to the genre. It's like those characters are making us think about our own relationship with games. Yes. And it makes you wonder, is this self-awareness becoming like a litter pissy staple? Right. It's like the genre is evolving alongside us. Totally. I mean, we've got fitness trackers, social media points. It's true. Even those dystopian books where you're like karma score is on a display oh yeah it's like yeah. We're, we're all in some big game now that's matthew sylvester's point games gamifying real life exactly like imagine a society you get uh, points for good deeds everything's tracked rated it's like black mirror but for lit rpg right is that real life anymore or just a really advanced sim whoa so where does lit rpg even end then it's a big question, and it leads to a debate that's causing some, you know, anxiety in the community. This idea of barely lit RPG, the fear of gatekeeping, it's real. Yeah, every genre has its, like, protectors of the tradition, right? It, totally. And for authors like Dustin Timner, that pressure to be gamey enough, it's got to be tough. Imagine pouring your heart into a story. I know, right? And it's judged on whether it has enough stat screens. James G. Patton brought this up in the forum how readers expect certain things now. It's true. Like, if you don't have your one sort of system messages, some readers are going to be upset. And those reviews, especially for indie authors, they can make or break you. It's a tough balance, for sure. Right. Readers want what they know, but authors want to innovate. It's like that classic tension, pushing boundaries versus sticking to the familiar. And lit RPG is no different. But hey, look at sci-fi. Okay. Started with rockets and robots, now look at it. Cyberpunk, dystopian, space opera, it's everywhere. Exactly. Who knows what lit RPG will become? That's exciting. And speaking of, Dustin Tyner's game lit idea, could that be the answer? Maybe. Think of it like this. If lit RPG is the big city, game lit is the artsy district. Ooh, I like that. More freedom to experiment. The focus shifts a bit. From stats to, like, the human impact of it all. Exactly. Exploring how game-like stuff affects characters we connect with, even if the world's fantastical. So... Less about inventory lists, more about how a virtual quest reflects real loss. Yes. Emotions, psychology, those are front and center. Game lit could be that bridge then for readers who want different things. And who knows? Maybe it's just the start. We saw lit FPS, lit RTS, all sorts of ideas. It's like a whole multiverse of lit RPG is opening up. Right. So listener, you're entering at an awesome time. A time of change, of figuring out what this genre is. Don't be afraid to explore. Exactly. Find the books you love, the definitions that click for you. It's your journey. That's what's so great about it. Yeah. But before you go, one last thing to ponder. Okay. If a story, it nails the game stuff perfectly. Yeah. Mechanics, world, everything. Okay. But it's just not enjoyable to read. Is it really good lit RPG? That's the question, isn't it? It's not just about stats. It's got to grab you, transport you, make you feel something. The magic of storytelling. Exactly. So go out there, dear listener, find your lit RPG, and never stop exploring. Happy reading.